Hi everybody, my name is Kimberly Honeycutt and I am a nutritional therapy practitioner as well as a wellness coach and I would like to welcome you to my first wellness vlog. Um, today I would like to talk to you about food sensitivities and uh, before we get started I would like to share with you um, my loving disclaimer and that is, is, is basically I'm passionate about everything that has to do about wellness. And when I find something that's working for me or for one of my clients, or if I read something really, really cool, I wanna share it. I want everybody to know, because I just want everybody to be happy and well. That's that's my that's my thing, you know? Um, but at the same time, I want you to understand in no way am I ever claiming to be a clinical nutritionist, nor am I claiming to be a doctor. So before you follow any of the suggestions on this vlog or on my website, please seek the counsel of your primary health care provider. So with that being said, um, welcome. I'm actually shooting this video from a friend's cabin and I am so incredibly grateful to be here. It has been the most wonderful time. It is the most relaxing place and um, I just felt what better time to start this this uh, vlog but while you know I'm nice and peaceful and calm and um, ready to go. So back to food sensitivities. So why would you want to even find out if you had a food sensitivity? Well the thing is, is our food supply has changed more in the last 50 years than it has in over the 100 years before that. And our bodies just are not understanding how to deal with these Franken foods or fake foods. Um, so what's happening is we're getting a lot of food sensitivities and that shows up as an inflammatory response in our body. And it also shows up in a variety of different symptoms. You know, the most common symptom, you know, that people look for that they think that they're sensitive, you know, an allergy to a food is like if you eat a peanut and you can't breathe or you know you break out in hives that's an allergy but a food sensitivity is much more subtle and you may not notice it you may just think it's just part of the environment or it's you know just a cat or you know just anything or maybe you do think well maybe it's something that I ate but you don't realize it is something that you're eating you know and some of those you know the, the more common ones are like I said is our digestive issues you know you have acid reflux you have irritable bowel syndrome but some of the ones that we don't ever think about are foggy thinking dark circles under our eyes you know, puffiness, us, you know, just feeling puffy. Autoimmune disease is huge. It's, you know, it's directly related to, um, to the food supply and, uh, and the food sensitivities. And, you know, sinus problems, sinus problems, chronic sinus problems that you have that are just not responding to treatments. A lot of times it's a food sensitivity, usually dairy and wheat. And then you have, you know, just that, that chronic, your mojo's got up and left, you know, you just don't have it, you know, you just, you want to do something, but you, you just, the energy's just not there, you know, but you're getting your sleep, and you're eating the right foods, so you think. These are just some of the symptoms of a food sensitivity. Now, these symptoms can definitely be the symptom of some other disease, but as a nutritional therapy practitioner, and as someone who had a whole heck of a lot of health issues, I exhausted a lot of conventional medical treatment and I went and I started looking at food. And when I started eliminating foods is when I finally started to heal. I, and, and healing, it wasn't just the weight loss that I was experiencing, is I had clear thinking. I could hold on a conversa I could hold a conversation without squirrel type of thing, you know, like I was really, really ADD. I still am, but not as bad as I used to be. Um, my energy levels are getting better. Now, I'm not totally there. I'm still on the journey, but as I learn, I want to share with you. 
So, you know, just Anne Wigmore, she's got a wonderful, wonderful quote that pretty much sums up why it's so important for you to figure out which foods are benefiting you and your body and which foods you need to take out of your diet. And that quote is, the food you eat can either be the safest form of medicine or the slowest form of poison. That's really, really deep, but I'm here to tell you that it's actually really, really true. You don't want to be putting into your body something that you're sensitive to, that it's creating an inflammatory reaction because that's going to cascade down into illness later on in your life. So I want to share with you today a few um, do-it-yourself at-home free tests that you can do to kind of figure out if you might have a food sensitivity. Now, the first one is really, really easy. It's called the skinny to fat test. And basically, it's when you wake up in the morning and you put your clothes on, you know, your bra, your panties, man, your underwear, your socks, your watches, and by the end of the day, do you have marks, you know, from where your underwear, your bra was, were, sorry, and where they were, <laughs> Or when you take your socks off, you know, do you have a mark from those from your pantyhose? Um, that is, you're holding onto water, and that is an inflammatory response. So that's the first one. Do you feel skinny in the morning and fat by the end of the day? That that could be a hidden food sensitivity. Now, another one is called the pulse test. And what you do with that, actually, let me say this now before I forget, is underneath this video, I created a PDF that you can print off so you have all the instructions and the log so you can re record your pulse and do the test like I'm going to tell you right now. But um, how you do the pulse test is when you sit down, you're going to get a couple of samples of food that you th think you might be having um, a reaction to, and you're going to sit at your table, and you're going to take a few deep, relaxing breaths and calm down. And then you're going to take your pulse for one full minute not 30 seconds 30 seconds and times it multiply it by two but for the full 60 seconds and then you're going to write that on your journal then you're going to take a sample of the food and you're going to put it in your mouth and you're going to chew it and you're going to taste it but don't swallow it just taste it and then look at your watch and count for 30 seconds. You want that food to stay in your mouth for 30 seconds so your brain has a chance to, your your taste buds has, has a chance to work with your brain and the rest of your system and communicate to your heart what's going on with that food. So after the 30 seconds, you want to, um, you're going to want to uh, redo your test, you redo your pulse, I'm sorry, and you're going to want to do it again for a full 60 seconds the full minute and then you're going to record that on your journal and if it um, if it is changed by anything more than four then the chances are your body is having a reaction to that food so again that is right at the, that PDF is right underneath this video print it out do it and you can even do it with supplements you know you can do it with you know pretty much anything you're putting in your mouth so again the um, the PDF is underneath this video and the the last one which is something that i have pretty i have all my clients do it just because food sensitivities are so we don't always know so i have all my clients do an elimination diet and what an elimination diet is you're going to an elim, you're going to eliminate a food for 14 days so let's use dairy as an example so we're going to um, i'm going to have one of my clients eliminate dairy that's where we're going to start. So they're going to eliminate everything that's dairy. And I also I'll often get the question, well, can I have, <laughs> can I get some, um, can I put some milk in my coffee? No, not a smidgen, nothing. And uh, I, sometimes I need to provide them um, a hidden sources of dairy so they know that some of the other foods that they're eating that may not, they think have, have 
that they think may not have dairy but actually does. So they know that they are really going dairy free for 14 days. Now after those 14, 14 days, on the 15th day you'll go ahead and reintroduce that food and see what kind of reaction you're having. Include it with every meal. You know, have it for some snacks. Eat it throughout the day. You know, just so your body's really gonna get a big taste of it. And if you notice that suddenly you're feeling foggy, you're having digestive upset, or any, if you notice any change in the way that you're feeling, then you perhaps could be having a sensitivity to it. Now on the day after you reintroduce it, you need to stay off that food again for three days because sometimes it does take the body, the immune system, about three days to catch up. Um, to to actually register it as a sensitivity. So you're going to do it for you're going to stay off of the food. Let's like I said, dairy. You're going to stay off of dairy for 14 days. The 15th day, eat it, have fun, eat your cheese, have some milk in your coffee, do whatever. And then on 16, 17, and 18, you're going to eliminate it again and keep a log. And um, then you can do that again for any type of food that um, you might think that you have a sensitivity to. So there we have it. We have three, three easy do-it-yourself home food sensitivity test. We've got the um, skinny to fat test and then we've got the pulse test and then you have the elimination diet. And I really hope that you go home and you, um, or if you're at home, what I hope that you do try it. And um, also, if, if, you find, if you think that this information would be useful, please share this video with your friends. Um, share it with whoever. You know, you can find um, the Facebook share button underneath this video. You can send it out as an email. And then also comment below. I'm really interested about your results and you know anything else that you might know about food sensitivities. Join the conversation. I'm doing this because I want people to feel well inside and out. I want people to be happy and you know true wellness comes from you know just all of us working together and sharing what we know so we can learn and grow and be healthy together. So um, share with your friends and your family and please comment below and if you haven't done so already go to um, our website and sign up for our newsletter because this is a weekly gig I'm gonna do this every week with some type of topic sometimes it's gonna be about food other times it may be about something else that has to do with wellness um, but I just want to I want to thank you for being here today and listening to this and good luck and don't forget to share and don't forget to comment and don't forget to download your PDF. Thank you for listening. See you next week. Bye.